Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com. Today we're here at the Heart Valve Summit in Chicago, Illinois. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Chris Malazari, who is a cardiac surgeon at Northwestern Memorial Hospital here in Chicago. Nice to have you here today, Dr. Malazari. Thank you very much, glad to be here. Yeah, so maybe we can start. Um, we were just having a conversation about TAVI, but before we do that, can, can you tell everybody what your specialty is in terms of cardiac surgery? Sure, so I've been a cardiac surgeon here at Northwestern for five years. My specialty is in uh, valvular heart surgery, specifically heart valve repair, minimally invasive techniques, and as we're going to talk about today, transcatheter heart valve replacement. So what attracted you to that specialty? Yeah, the field is moving so quickly now. I think uh, valve repair and valve replacement can be done with smaller and smaller incision through minimally invasive approaches. and. The next uh, logical step is endovascular repair, so these transcatheter techniques. I think it's a very exciting field. Got it. And, uh, you know, as patients, we're hearing TAVI this and TAVI that. There's a lot of news around it. And I know that Northwestern has been very involved with the research and the development, but I'm sure there are still a good handful of questions from the patients that start off with something like, what is TAVI? Sure, so TAVI is an acronym for transcatheter aortic valve implantation. Uh, another acronym is TAVR, transcatheter aortic valve replacement. I think both are fine acronyms for this procedure. It differs from heart valve surgery and the fact that uh, open heart surgery, meaning the heart lung machine and uh, stopping the heart to, aortic, to look at the aortic valve is not needed. Um, so the valve is actually deployed from within the blood vessels, from within the heart on top of the old valve. So there's no incision to the sternum or to the ribs in this process, correct? Yeah, correct. So the typical the typical uh, site of access is through the groin, much like a cardiac catheterization, and that can be typically done with a you know, percutaneous puncture. There's other sites that are available. The second most common access site is through a small incision uh, in the lower left chest. Yeah. And as a patient, I guess one of the questions would be is, what, what other benefits are there besides maybe not having a you know, cracked chest, as they typically say? Sure, because it's so minimally invasive that uh, the best thing about this procedure is that recovery is a lot quicker. So I think you can expect the hospital stay to be a lot shorter and return to full function to be a lot quicker with transcatheter valves. Got it. And so if I remember right, last year, maybe around November, the first TAVI device was approved by the FDA. Is that, is that right? Correct. Um, so the FDA approved this uh, particular device uh, sometime last year, and the indications are fairly specific. It's for patients who have aortic stenosis, who have symptoms because of the aortic stenosis, and are considered to be unsuitable for traditional surgical aortic valve replacement by uh, cardiac surgery and uh, cardiology. So it's really the sick of the sickest patients who we reserve TAVI for right now. This is the only indication that FDA has given us up to this point, although I think in the future there's going to be expanded indications. So if I'm a patient, I'm watching this, and I am very frail, and I am very sick, and I'm thinking this could help me, or I'm an adult child taking care of my mom or dad, one of their questions might be, is, is TAVI available at all cardiac centers? Um, so that's a great question, and um, uh, that profile certainly fits the study patient that we looked at. We've been doing this since 2008, and typically the average age for patients who get TAVI are about 83 to 85, and they've got comorbidities that make them you know, not very good candidate for aortic valve replacement. Um, not all centers are doing TAVI at this point. It's only select centers. Um, most of the centers have been participating in the trials uh, up to this point, and very select centers uh, that have a specialty in valvular heart surgery. Got it. And so uh, TAVI seems like it might be appropriate for me, maybe my mom or my dad. What are the typical outcomes for someone who's had a TAVI procedure? Is it, is it a successful procedure? Yeah, it's a very successful procedure. So. Um, our results are pretty much in line with national, um, the national studies because we were part of those studies. But I think it's very good for those patients who are at the extremes of age. I recall one patient we did, she was uh, 101 years old when we did the wow. TAVI procedure. Wow. And uh, 
currently she's about 104. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. And so, last question would be is, if you were talking to the patients, which you are, what would be the number one piece of advice that you'd offer someone who's thinking, maybe Tabby is for me? Yeah, sure. I think the best piece of advice um, for the patient or loved ones is to seek a center that has an expertise in valvular heart surgery. Um, not, not only valve replacement and valve repair, but also centers who are uh, specializing in minimally invasive techniques. I think the uh, transcatheter techniques can be a good option for a subset of patients. Not all patients at this point, but I think future technology will help with expanded indications for maybe moderate risk patients in the future. Great. Well, Dr. Malazer, on behalf of all the patients and the caregivers in, in our community, including Janice Kilbasa, who I know you just performed successful surgery on, I want to thank you for all the work that you're doing. We really appreciate it. And, you know, just keep up all the great work. It's um, definitely having a great impact on the folks in our community. So thanks so much. Great. Thank you.